Hey everybody. The last few days have been very telling, but not unexpected. After disagreeing with a friend of mine, and after attempting to privately contact him multiple times to express my concerns, I felt it important to go public. The reason for this is not to create drama, but because relevant portions of my disagreement and concerns pertain specifically to the direction the currently most vocal voices in MGTOW are attempting to take our online community. That said, I knew that because of the nature of my disagreements, drama was likely going to happen. However, the only thing evil men need to do to succeed is for good men to stand by and do nothing. Many times in a man's life, he has a choice. Remain silent and hide, or to openly and forthrightly stand for his beliefs and stand shoulder to shoulder with his brothers who risk themselves to do the right thing, regardless of the negative backlash. And I can say this from personal experience. When it comes to addressing these kinds of concerns, even if I am the only one to do so, I never stand alone for long. Because red-pilled men of courage and conscience always come out of the woodwork to stand with me as their brother. As you'll see shortly, the same is true today. What many, including cosplay MGTOW, don't understand is that as a red pill man who is internally validated, external validation, while I appreciate it, I certainly don't require it. Now, before we get started, I hope MGTOW and other red pill men will watch closely what happened to me in this circumstance and use my conduct as a template of how to respond to lies, astroturf brigades, and cuck army assaults on red pill men from all walks of life. Because the same tactics being used against me have been used against men by feminists in family court for decades, and in concept, are defeated in the same manner that I'm responding to this Spurg disinfo campaign. So, don't think of this experience as a drama, but rather, think of it as a clinic of how to respond and effectively stand alone against unethical conduct and hashtag MeToo bigotry. And learn from it, because all men are attacked at some point in their life, and they either give in and get slaughtered, or they oppose the bigotry and they move on in their life, stronger for the experience. Adversity always culls the weak and cultivates the strong. I also want to make another thing abundantly clear. I oppose incels. The only reason I oppose incels is because of their blue-pilled gynocentric focus. As incels embrace the red pill teachings of MGTOW and assimilate into the MGTOW community, they're no longer incels. They're red pill men creating a better life for themselves, free from female validation. However, many of the current batch of incel migrants to the MGTOW community refuse to assimilate. They're like radical jihadis who refuse to assimilate into Western culture, and they want to bring their backward, third world extremism and bigotry to MGTOW. Make no mistake, they want MGTOW to adopt their blue pill ideology rather than join the community and create better lives for themselves, free from female validation. Further, these blue pill ideologies have no place in MGTOW communities. Notice how only a single MGTOW content creator is telling men to take women's rights away. Other than he and his fecal Bushido acolytes, to my knowledge, no one else is promoting this. I have never seen Sandman promote it. I have never seen Human promote it. I have never seen Stardusk promote it. I have never seen Sunrise Hoodie promote it. I have never seen Barbarossa promote it. I have never seen Paul Proteus promote it. I have never seen Marcus promote it. None of the most credible MGTOW voices who speak on MGTOW core principles promote taking women's rights away. Rather, they promote men walking away from women and living a life free from female validation. This is the exact opposite of taking women's rights away. Even those who promote this deeply flawed and dysfunctional concept admit it's not MGTOW. Yet it's on their channels. It's the core concept they advocate. They even speak out of both sides of their mouth. On one hand, it's the fool's errand of repealing the 19th, a flawed MRA-styled concept that will never be successful. On the other hand, it's incel jihad, which is even more dysfunctional for reasons that should be obvious at face value. 
So how did the lower primate fecal Bushido cuck squad respond to me publicly speaking out in opposition to their blue-pilled fool's errand? Well, they read, of course. If you've watched my last video, they even outrage mobbed my sponsor, the dollhouse, like SJW cucks. They lied to him, they threatened to boycott his business, and they forced him to cancel my sponsorship. This is some blue-pilled cuckoldry, but it's not unexpected. They even astroturfed my channel. If you look at this first slide, you'll see that this is my last five videos since I brought this up. Now, on the lower right-hand side, you can see that the AstroTurf downvote campaign downvoted me to 1,200 to 938. The next video was 400 likes or almost 500 likes to 1,300 dislikes. And the same is true all the way up the line for these five videos. Now, you would think that after all this pressure, that I would be losing subs left and right. This screenshot was taken last night from my channel, okay? In the last 28 days, I've had almost 1,400 new subscribers. So, what does this prove? Well, it irrefutably demonstrates that the majority of attacks on my channel, these videos specifically, were from people and their sock puppets who were not my subscribers or my viewers. Yet, they're all like, oh, I don't like it. I'm unsubscribing. Or they just spout some other vitriol, right? Well, this proves that the negativity surrounding my channel is also nothing but an AstroTurf campaign, an attack to hide the verifiable truths within these videos and to foment misinformation and protect flawed ideologies. Now, I don't want you to take my word for this alone. If you've watched my first video on this issue, Necessary medicine is a bitter pill to swallow. You'll know what my concerns are exactly. I outline them clearly. Don't take anyone else's word for what I say. Listen to me say it yourself. Don't listen and believe. Trust, but verify. Then, go to the next part of this video. Because you see, in the next three screens, two are from MGTOW, one is from an anti-MGTOW. They made these comments after watching my videos for themselves. Listen to their words, look at the evidence, and judge for yourself. Here's the first one. This is from mad scientist Kazen, otherwise known as Kazen Tetra on YouTube. Now, he's been a part of many TFM 420 shows as part of the roundtable. I've done many live streams with this guy. Really great guy. He says, DDJ, you know after remotely and politely discussing TFM's potential issues as being a doll owner, his chemical love bond, and the altering of his judgment. And TFM's following reen session, that's his 55-minute video, which makes no sense from someone who is all about internal validation that he, she, Zer is not going to listen to you. Your words fall on deaf ears. It's sad to see how far TFM will go to defend Cat and Broccoli in all of this, but how he is willing to throw Plummer and you under the bus. Now, this is from a long-term TFM fan. I used to be a TFM fan back in his first year or so. Then, I was a Patreon member with access to the patron pit on his Discord. I only hung out a couple times. Once was with Plummer and Monk and a few guys way late at night talking about forming a MGTOWN nation. It was a good time. Those guys seemed really solid. This was close to a year ago. Then some chick drama started and I had to bounce. I haven't watched TFM since. I went back to TFM's channel after watching DDJ's video the other day, and I gotta say, TFM has indeed changed despite his claims otherwise. The hubris is obvious to someone who went a year without exposure to his content. You can even see it in his new imagery. The chimp on the throne with a cigar, collared shirt, tie, rings on every finger. Even look on the face, coupled with the tone and inflection you can hear in his voice, indicate a man who imagines himself Grand Simeon on high, and it's really heartbreaking to see. TFM used to be a voice I respected. I don't know much of this recent drama. I'm speaking only as a former fan for years, since long before Stardusk's video that spoke of the fecal-flinging Simeon. This isn't the first time MGTOW have turned on their own. If I had to guess, I'd say the joyride is almost over. Nobody wants drama. We all went MGTOW to get away from drama. I don't know what the deal is, but this shit has got to stop one way or another. If 
If it's true that TFM's community has been infected, then quarantine is the only answer. Now, this is the third slide, and this is from an anti-MGTOW who criticizes many in the MGTOW community. Just to let all the idiots know, the most popular person in the argument usually isn't the one that's correct. Turd eating monkey may be popular for all the wrong reasons, and I know for a fact that he's not in the right in this drama. Now, if you've seen my comments section, you'll know that there is a theme in almost every comment that disagrees with me. They are all ad hom attacks, they are all character assassination attacks, and the majority of these comments criticizing me never actually address any of the issues I bring up. The shorter comments are indicative of sock puppet accounts, probably being run by just a few individuals, probably some that I've named in my prior videos. Here's the definition of character assassination and ad hom. Character assassination is a deliberate and sustained process that destroys the credibility and reputation of a person, institution, organization, social group, or nation. Agents of character assassinations employ a mix of open and covert methods to achieve their goals, such as raising false accusations, planting and fostering rumors, and manipulating information. They also brigade sponsors, and they try to interfere with business relationships, in case that doesn't sound familiar yet. Character assassination is an attempt to tarnish a person's reputation. It may involve exaggeration, misleading half-truths, or manipulation of facts to present an untrue picture of the targeted person. It is a form of defamation and can be a form of ad hominem argument. Ad hominem is a fallacious argumentative strategy whereby genuine discussion of the topic at hand is avoided by instead attacking the character, motive, or other attribute of the person making the argument, or persons associated with the argument, rather than attacking the substance of the argument itself. And by the way, both of these things are logical fallacies. Now, it's time to switch gears to a different yet extremely relevant subject, outrage mobs in general. This is a recent article from American Greatness, Attack of the Techno Lynch Mob. The Covington lie offered the perfect occasion for the electronic mob to pounce after temporarily licking its wounds following the BuzzFeed fake news hysteria, and it did so without shame or even much regret after the fact. The entire psychodrama boiled down to not what the facts on the ground showed, but rather what each party was perceived innately to be. They were mostly male, they were pro-life and anti-abortion, some were wearing red Trump MAGA hats. Added up, and they were fat targets from central casting. On the other side, the stereotypes were even more striking. Nathan Phillips was a Native American. The key in these internet lynchings is to get in first and worst and keep at it. Yet in French Revolutionary Street style, the initial outrage tweeters and posters were almost automatically seen as passé in a nanosecond. Dox the boys. No. Write their school to abort their careers. No. Go to their school and protest at their homes. No. Punch them. No. Burn them alive. No. Stuff them into wood chippers. What then must we relearn from the latest progressive fantasy? Media truth is relative. Low truth is bound to bothersome facts that are irrelevant. End of story. The reason so many lynchers did not apologize is because their targets were guilty of who they were, not what they did. Rhetoric, not action, matters. Professing outrage and virtue signaling count more than actual facts of generosity and charity or the life one lives. Guilt is assuaged not through real contrition or repertory acts, but virtually through clever social media posting. Eventually, these reigns of terror come to an end when a few finally scream that the emperor is naked and push back, but usually only after thousands of lives are ruined, and we are not even close yet to making internet lynching an unprofitable venture. Then we move on to townhall.com. Liberal outrage is all the rage. The mutant mob calling for the abolition of immigrations and customs enforcement, ICE, is one thing. It is also expected from those who despise the concept of borders and capitalism. But to have prominent members of Congress and possible presidential nominees publicly jump on board is beyond parody. It's pandering from behind. Saturday Night Live 
couldn't mock a mockery like that if they wanted to. The real thing beats them to the punch at every turn. This skit would cause normal people to ask questions, like, if you think this country is so awful, why would you choose to come here? But the radical left are not normal people. They cheer and nod in unison like a series of bobblehead dolls on the dashboard of a car driving down a dirt road. The Democratic Party has become their fringe. They are beyond parody. Fringe is the edge of something attached to the center of something else. Or, at least, it's supposed to be. The Democratic Party has no center anymore. This, I suspect, came as a surprise even to its former leaders. Then we move on to USA Today. Covington Catholic Fur is a warning to end our dangerous social media mob mentality. Social media encourages demented mobs and rushes to judgment. There is no need to broadcast an immediate, uninformed opinion. You can wait. We all can. It has all the trappings of a major scandal. Footage of a large group of young white Catholic schoolboys, many of them wearing Donald Trump's Make America Great Again hats, apparently taunting an elderly Native American man at the Lincoln Memorial. The young men appeared to be bullying, intimidating, and ridiculing the older gentleman, with one boy standing several inches from his face and smirking while numerous others hollered and hooted around him. It was, on its face, a disgraceful display of nastiness, the sort of thing that would quite reasonably make anyone enraged. But it wasn't that simple. The full footage of the event is confusing and, for the most part, appears to exonerate the boys. Details come fast these days. Why not wait? Our social media dystopia has come to an end. These online services, while admittedly fun and sometimes useful, have brought out the worst in many of us. We are regularly in the midst of full-blown social media mob incidents where under-informed pundits and commentators are rushing to the quickest snap judgments before the facts are barely known. What's frustrating is that in this age of instant digital information, we often get a fuller picture of incidents like these within a matter of days or even hours. If you hold off joining a social media mob, you can probably expect more information before the day is out. And you can save yourself the trouble of targeting innocent individuals. This sort of thing isn't just unpleasant for a minute or an hour. It can ruin lives. It is indeed very possible that the young man in the video will be remembered for a long time. That image of him may very well define his life for years to come. This was troubling enough when the story first broke. Now it looks like the event may have been wildly mischaracterized. The possibility is horrifying. There is no need to broadcast an uninformed opinion about a complicated event. You can wait. We all can. The other option, of course, is to join the hordes of furious internet users, cursing and smearing and blaming people whom you've never met and pronouncing confidently on incidents with which you are not familiar at all. This sort of behavior is destructive and hateful and ultimately pointless. And of course, one day, it could be you on the receiving end of it. Better to stop it now. Now, as you can see, outrage mobs are usually the products of leftist irrational thinking. In fact, on the left, the re is real. But for some reason, this blue-pilled re lower primate mentality has infected the MGTOW community as well. Originally, I was deeply confused about this for a long time until I ran across the following article discussing a study that explained everything, and it cleared up all my questions. Because you see, monkeys with smaller testicles scream louder to compensate, study finds. So in reality, as you can see from this video, it's not my MGTOW subscribers that are astroturf brigading my channel. It's tiny, bald, blue pill, lower primates that are reen as loud as they can that are attempting to throw turds all over my verifiable facts in hopes of covering up the brutal truth regarding their indefensible gynocentric fantasy of taking women's rights away and my other concerns about my friend's mental health. If incel refugees want to migrate to MGTOW and shed their blue-pilled ignorance for red pill truths, I welcome you with open arms. But those incel refugees who refuse to assimilate, those who are instead 
trying to turn MGTOW into incel 2.0 revenge of the cucks? Go back to your ignorant third world shithole. There is no sanctuary for your blue pill bigotry here. I'm DDJ, and this is your dose of misandry today.